Hello and welcome to part two of How to Read Music. My name is Roy Johnson and this is Acoustic RGJ. If you haven't seen part one yet, take a look. It introduces timing by looking at note values, rests, dotted minims and tied notes. In this video we'll be looking at the stave and some of the information that you can get from it, such as the treble clef, the time signature, the key signature and lots more besides. If you found this video useful, please subscribe. It's absolutely free. Do it now or do it at the end of the video. Don't forget to click the bell icon and then I can let you know when I've uploaded new videos. And also please feel free to have some comments in the section below. Thanks for listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, so early on we mentioned the, the, the dreaded word, the stave. Um, the stave is the thing that we hang all our notes and all our musical information on. So I'm just going to go through some of the things you would see on a typical stave. The first thing we see is something called the treble clef. That's the kind of the, the curly symbol right at the beginning on the left hand side. Now in music there are several different types of clef, but predominantly for guitar players we use something called the treble clef. The treble clef is also known as the G clef because it shows you where the note G sits on the stave and that would be on the second line up. The things that look like hashtags collectively are known as the key signature. So they tell us what key a piece of music, music is going to be played in. We'll have a look at keys and key signatures a little later on in the video. We also have two numbers, one on top of each other, which looks like a fraction. Uh, that's called the time signature, and that tells us what the feel or the pulse of the music is. So it could be 3-4, which could be a waltz time, or it could be 4-4, four, four, for example. And there are several different types of time signature, and we'll have a look at those later on. You'll then notice that the stave itself is divided by horizontal lines. So these are known as bar lines and the gaps between them are known as bars or if you're in America they're often known as measures. So a bar is really just a small unit of music uh, and it just helps to read music more easily into manage manageable chunks. You'll see at the end of the line of music two vertical lines with um, two dots just in front of them and to the left of that you'll see another couple of vertical lines with two dots. These are called repeat signs and what they indicate is that any music written between the two sets of lines with the dots is played more than once. So as you come along and play through the piece of music you'll go through the first repeat sign, kind of ignoring it really, and then you hit the second repeat sign and that tells you to go back to where the first repeat sign is and play that section again. Now if the repeat happens to be close to the beginning of a piece of music and the intention is that you to go back to the start of a piece of music, you may find that you only have the second repeat sign. So that will just send you right back to the start of the piece of music and you play from there. There's one more indication on here that we've got and you can see at the, um, on the left hand side just above the key signature there's what looks like a crotchet and a number, in this case it's 120. And that's just a general indication of how fast a piece of music should be played. So the, in other words, in this case, um, you've got 120 crotchets per minute. So if you're playing with a metronome, you'd set your metronome to 120 and each click would represent a crotchet beat. Let's have a think about time signatures. So the time signature is the two numbers that appear at the beginning of the stave. Think of it as a fraction. The top number, in this case the number 3, tells us how many beats there are in a bar. So in this case I could count 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. The number at the bottom, the number 4, tells us what type of beat it is that we're counting. So in this case it's a 4, and think of a 4 as a quarter, so remove the 3, put 1 over the top so you have a, a quarter. And that tells us that the type of beat is a quarter note. And if you can remember back, a quarter note uh, is otherwise known as a crotchet. So we now know that a typical bar will have three crotchets inside it. Now bear in mind that a bar of music won't just have three crotchets. The other bars can have any kind of type of note really, providing that when you add them all up, they come to a total of three beats. So in this case, for example, I have one, two, three, or it could be one and two and three and, or it could be one, 
two and three and. Another time signature, and probably one of the most common, particularly for banjo players, um, is four four time. Thinking of it as a fraction, the top number, number four, tells us how many beats there are. So there's going to be four beats in a bar. That's the kind of the pulse. One, two, three, four. And the bottom number, which is also a four, tells us that those beats are going to be made up of crotchets or quarter notes. Let's play through this example. One, two, three, four. One and two and three, four. One, two and three, four. You'll notice that in the second bar, there's a crotchet rest. So there wasn't any playing at all during that, that one beat. The last example we are going to have a look at is 6-8 time. Now 6-8 time is maybe a little bit more complicated than the other examples we've looked at. The first number 6 is quite straightforward because again, it just tells us there are 6 beats in a bar. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now the bottom number is an 8. So the 8 means that the beat is made up of 8th notes, which are the same as quavers. So rather than counting crotchets this time, we're going to be counting quavers. And you'll also notice that the quavers are grouped in bunches of threes, because six eight has a feel almost of two beats per bar. So it kind of goes like one, two, three, four, five, six. You could kind of count it one and uh, two and... Uh, it's often used in Irish music for playing jigs. So to play an example for you, this is how this six eight example would sound like. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, and four, five, six. One and two and three, four, five, six. The next thing to consider is the key signature. The key signature is important because it determines which notes and which chords are played in a piece of music. The key signature is determined by what look like hashtags. They're actually called sharp signs and the different numbers of sharp signs determines what key we're in. To make things a little bit more complicated for us, each key signature could be one of two keys, either major or minor. If there are no sharps on the stave at all, then the key will either be in C major or A minor. If there is one sharp sign, the key will be G or E minor. If there are two sharp signs, the key will be D major or B minor. If there are three sharp signs, the key will be in A major or F sharp minor. And if there are four sharp signs, the key will either be in E major or C sharp minor. I'd like to finish off by looking at the tab we looked at earlier. This time I've put the musical stave above the tab. And you can see there is actually a lot more information. At the beginning of the line we have the treble clef, and that is followed by the key signature. In this example we have five sharps. This puts us either in the key of B major or G sharp minor. We then have the time signature which tells us that we're in 4-4, four, four, so there's four crotchet beats per bar. Looking at the note values on this particular line of music we can immediately see the music is made up of a mixture of quavers, crotchets, there's a minim and a semi breve. There's also a rest and the rest is quite important because that tells us that the first note that we play doesn't actually start on the first beat of the bar. It starts half a beat into the bar. If I was counting that bar one and two and three and four and, I would actually play it, play the first note on the and of one. So I'd go one, two, three, four, one and two and. So there's quite a lot more to actually read music than we've been through, but I think this is a good kind of foundation, a good way to start thinking about note values and thinking about timing and um, practicing to count while you actually play to improve your kind of your timing accuracy. I hope you found this video interesting. There's quite a lot that we've been through. I will be looking at making another video in the future with some more, more detailed information about music reading. But if you found this video interesting, please click the subscribe button and tap the bell icon and that way I can let you know when more videos have been uploaded. So thanks for listening. Take care. Bye for now.